Greetings everybody, it's Matt from Camelot Classic Cars here. In the short video we have attached, it will be how to rebuild your master cylinder. First thing is to identify what you have. On the left, we have a master cylinder and power brake booster from a disc brake car. On the right, we have the same setup, master cylinder and booster, except this is from a four wheel drum. You can see the difference between the drum. We have an equal amount, uh, two circles for the front and rear reservoirs of the master cylinder, whereas in a disc, we have different sizes. Uh, the front taking a much larger reservoir for the disc brakes, rear taking the smaller one because it's drum. So in this video, we're going to be showing a sample of rebuilding a master cylinder for a four-wheel drum, but the concept is the same. So let's get to work on how to rebuild it. All right, here we are on the bench with our four-wheel drum master cylinder. This is after it's separated from the power brake booster. Of course, all the fluid has been drained. The cap has come off the top. We see an equal amount of reservoirs for the front and rear. Again, because they are equal, this is for a four-wheel drum car. Now, in the back is a O-ring, I'm sorry, a split ring that we removed through a special set of pliers. Basically looks like this piece. This is the cover. When the spring comes out, the snap ring, we see the guts of it, which is basically a series of two pistons. The rear one for the rear chamber or the rear reservoir, and a front one for the front reservoir. Both of these are what push the fluid from the reservoir and into the two lines that go to the front and rear brakes. Both of these have springs on either side to push it back. The fluid enters the chamber through the chamfer in the piston, and these plunging cups on the pistons or we'll push it through. When we took, take a look into the reservoir itself, there are a couple of holes in there. The big hole that you see, which is the main entry hole, is where the fluid goes from the reservoir and into the piston chamber. Those would be identified as this hole in the front and this hole in the rear. Now you'll see this tiny little hole right here. This is what's called a compensator valve. You have one in each of the reservoirs. What that compensator valve does is as brakes get hot because of friction, the fluid expands and that compensator valve allows that brake fluid to come back into the master cylinder as it gets hot. If that tiny valve gets clogged, which often happens in these cases, your brakes will lock shut. So in rebuilding it, you wanna make sure that you have that compensator valve cleared. Tiny, sometimes with a tiny pick or wire, you can make sure that it is cleared shut. We've taken out the pistons, and what we are going to now do is demonstrate quickly how to hone the chamber of the master cylinder. That is done with a honing tool that's attached to a drill. Uh, I'm going to pause the video so I can insert it, but we put a little bit of WD-40 in there to lubricate it. We will put the honing tool inside and spin it such that it polishes the inside chamber. We'll show that in just a second. All right, I've inserted the honing tool and I'm now gonna operate the drill on high speed. You don't have to use a lot of force. We're just gonna work it in and out of the piston chamber as it spins, keeping it lubricated inside with some WD-40. And what that will do is polish the bore of the master cylinder. And taking a look inside, we'll do this a couple times. It will get incredibly clean. All right, we've gone through a couple rounds with the honing tool. You can see we have a nice crosshatch pattern in there, very shiny, very clean. And that's what it should look like in the bore of our master cylinder. Now I'm gonna get a piece of wire, almost a welding wire would do, like a 30 to 35 thousandths. And I'm gonna clear out all of the valves in both reservoirs, front and rear. Obviously the feed valve, which is what puts the fluid into the chamber, and the compensator valve, which is the tinier one next to it to allow the brake fluid to expand as it gets hot. We'll get a wire and show how that's done in just a second. Okay, here we are getting ready to clear all the ports to allow the fluid to go into the piston chamber. This one that I'm pointing to with the wire is the actual opening the reservoir to bring the fluid from the reservoir into the chamber. This is the compensator valve. Now what I want to show you here is this is a 30 thousandths of an inch welding wire. Note how this will fit 
through the opening that feeds the chamber from the reservoir. However, 30 thousandths of an inch is still too big that this will not fit through the compensator valve. So we either have to get a smaller wire, or what I'm going to do is put this on the grinding wheel and actually grind this down a little bit, just around the circumference of it, to make it more tiny of a diameter, such that it fits through that compensator valve. Okay, I have just taken this off the grinding wheel. It might be a little hard to see, but you'll see where the copper is worn off, because this isn't solid copper, it's copper coated. But I have basically filed down this wire into a very, very fine point. And now it is fine enough that when I put it into that tiny opening of the compensator valve, it does go through. So I'm just going to move that in and out, make sure that that compensator valve is clear of any debris or foreign objects. I will stick it all the way in as I have it. And then again, just move that in and out, get it a little lubricated, and that will clear out that compensator valve. So you can actually use the other end of the wire for the regular opening. That feeds the fluid into the reservoir, finer point, finer tip end. You can see we're getting a little bit of debris on the end of that to clear out that compensator. Okay, we have officially cleaned this out. I've even blown a little bit of compressed air through it, which is always a good idea to make sure we get all of that junk and debris out. We have a real good picture now of our master cylinder that is disassembled. So to repeat again, this is for a four-wheel drum. We see equal reservoirs, front and rear. This is our valve or our opening that allows the fluid from the reservoir to go into the chamber. We have one in the front, bigger one right here in the back, nice and cleared out. This tiny little opening in the back, this is your compensator valve. This allows that fluid to return to the master cylinder as it gets hot and expands. We have a compensator valve in the back reservoir and tiny one up here in the front reservoir. So. We're going to stop our video there. Uh, we clean these out again um, before we conclude with a little bit of wire. I had to file this wire down from 30 thousandths. It's probably about 25 to 20 thousandths of an inch in diameter to get those nice and clean. You'll see what a nice job that does once this focuses on this rear cylinder. Blow it out with some compressed air, run it in with fluid. We showed you how to hone the cylinder uh, with our honing tool. And that will conclude this segment. In a future segment, I will show you how to clean all of the guts of it, basically the plungers and springs. Uh, clean this up real nice, reinsert them, and save you the cost of getting a new master cylinder when you can rebuild your own. Matt from Camelot Classic Cars, thank you for joining, and stay tuned.